Hi everyone, it's Professor Todd and this is the second video in the Bluest Eye series. In this video we'll be briefly covering uh, the winter section. Um, in this section, uh, as we talked about last time, we're introduced to um, various ways in which institutionalized racism and classism and sexism um, present within these characters. And Morrison explores this a little more deeply in the winter section by showing us ways in which this hierarchy of power um, manifests within certain groups of people. So um, for instance, within the black community of Lorraine, Ohio, uh, we see the ways in which racism impacts them even within their own community. So we get introduced to colorism with the introduction of the character of Maureen Peel. And we see how um, the McTeer girls kind of resent and dislike Maureen. Uh, they make up a name for her, Maureen Pie, um, as a way of kind of uh, combating perhaps this jealousy or insecurity that they feel about her because we're told that Maureen has uh, lighter skin and is considered more beautiful because of this, right? So that's this internalized belief in the beauty and superiority and idealization of whiteness um, impacts the black community, not only in comparison to the white people that they encounter, but also um, in comparison to each other. And so therefore Maureen um, becomes idealized herself because she's lighter and the girls both um, kind of idealize her and also hate her a little bit because of that, right? Um, and so it, it, Morrison is showing us the way in which discord is um, created even within the community, that the pervasiveness of racism and the impact of racism um, is so deep that it manifests in a variety of ways. It's not just one form of racism, but whenever you allow um, that kind of um, oppression and that kind of stereotyping to occur, it's going to, it's going to compound, right? It's not going to be just one instance of it or one variety of it. Oppression anywhere is oppression everywhere, right? It becomes pervasive as soon as you start allowing it. And we see um, Maureen, uh, when, when she's running away, when she's getting her feelings hurt, she's saying, um, you're ugly, you're black and ugly, right? So that comparison of blackness with ugliness has, um, has been internalized by Maureen as well. Um, then we see this again with the introduction of the character Geraldine. Right, um, we see Geraldine's form of self-loathing um, and her association with blackness, her association of blackness with dirtiness and being dirty um, and being poor and her attempts to distance herself from that. Um, and so we get not only the racism that Geraldine has internalized, but also the classism and the way um, that she looks at Bacola not only, and she, she dislikes her not only for being black, but also for being poor. And the impact that that has on her son, Junior, and the way in which he acts out his aggression on the cat. There's another instance, right, of someone who is feeling powerless taking out their anger and aggression on something that is less powerful than them. We saw this with Charlie in the previous section, which we talked about in the last video, and now we're seeing it with Junior and with Geraldine. Anytime someone is in a position of feeling powerless and taken advantage of and oppressed, um, oftentimes that manifests as taking it out on someone beneath you, right? Um, so we see this idea of um, oppression in a number of ways in these two chapters. We see it with both the racism and the colorism and that internalized aspect, but also with the poverty and the elitism that Geraldine um, tries to get away from and in the way her obsession with cleanliness and neatness and neatness and orderliness is all her trying to distance herself from what she believes um, is inferior, right? Blackness, ugliness, um, poverty, uh, dirtiness, all of those things that she kind of associates together. And so again, what we have here is Morrison showing us that impact on these characters and a variety of characters, right? Adults, children, men, women, um, poor, middle class, right? Well, Geraldine would be considered more middle class. Um, and so I think Morrison's message here is that when you allow this to exist, when this exists within a society, it is like a cancer that will eventually eat away at every aspect of that society. 
and that there's no one, there's no part of that society that can escape from it. So um, in the next video, we'll be talking um, about uh, spring and summer, the final two sections of the novel and what we see as the ultimate impact of these um, forms of oppression on Pecola and how that kind of plays out, okay?